Hello YouTube, it's Ashlar here with another tutorial in the mini-series on random numbers. Today's tutorial is going to pick up right where we left off, so feel free to copy the code that's on your screen right now, or watch the previous tutorials and follow along to see how we arrived at what we have on the screen. So today all we're going to really do is add a scanner into the program in order to allow the user to input values for these how many rolls and how many sides. In order to do this, we need to first import scanner, which comes from java.util.scanner. All we really need to do is instead of random, we can just put get rid of random and put star, because that'll import everything in java.util. It's a quicker way to do it. But otherwise, if you were importing things one at a time, you'd have import java.util.scanner, import java.util.random. But star just takes care of everything in one fell swoop. So now that we have everything from util imported, we need to create a, a reference to a scanner object, much like we did with random. So you can see above random, we're going to type scanner to call that class, and then name it something. I'm going to call mine Ashlar, because that's my name. And then equals new scanner. Now, unlike the way we did it with the random object, the scanner does actually need something inside these parentheses, what type of scanner it is. So in this case, we're going to use system.in. You notice we use system.out for print line. System.in is going to allow the user to input and semicolon. So now we've got a reference to a scanner called Ashlar, and that's what we're going to use to set the value of how many rolls and how many sides. So here under how many rolls, rather than just setting it at 10, we can call this reference to the scanner ashlar dot next int and that's all we have to do in order to make that variable user defined and before that we're going to want to prompt the user that they have to input something so let's output a line to the console which simply asks the user make sure it goes in parentheses and quotation marks how many times do you want to roll? Or you can type anything you want here. Okay, and then the screen is going to sit and wait for the user to input an integer. If they don't input an integer, the program will get an error, and the way to handle that would be with exception handling, which we're not going to deal with today. So for now, just make sure for the program to work properly that you input an integer and not a decimal point or letters or anything like that because the program will crash. Okay, now we're going to want to do the same thing before sides. We're going to output a line that says how many sides should the dice have, dude? I'm using some informal language in there just to really clarify that point that this is just printing a line to the screen. You can make it say whatever you want. And now instead of sides equals 6, we're going to use this ashlar.nextint again. So you can actually just copy and paste that because why type something that we don't have to? And that should be everything. The program should work. I'm going to hit run. And what it's going to do is we've got everything that works the way it was going to before, except instead of defining that there's 10 rolls and 6 sides to the dice, we're going to ask the user how many times do you want to roll and then we're going to define how many rolls by what number they put in. Then we're going to ask how many sides, and then we're going to wait for input again. And then we don't have to change anything we did earlier because since they're variables, the variables are already referenced here. So whatever they put in that gets set as how many rolls gets passed in to this for loop. So we don't have to change any code. That's one of the beauties of using variables instead of actually typing in all these values because then we can have them be anything and alter our program. We have all kinds of flexibility. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and show you what it outputs to the screen. So now we get how many times do you want to roll? And let's say 50 times. And how many sides should the dice have, dude? For now, let's do six like we did before, but we don't have to. And now you see we've got 50 rolls on roll 49, on roll 50. And all the other rolls are here if I scroll. You can see that they're all in there. And they're rolling two six-sided dice and totaling them just like before. Now we can run the program again and use different parameters. Let's roll 1,000 times. And let's say that the dice have 25 sides, like some kind of crazy RPG dice and let's roll. Okay, now obviously it's a computer, so it was able to roll a thousand times really, really fast, but they're all in there, all 1,000 rolls, and they're all numbered, 
and you can see we're getting higher totals now. We've got 9 and 18, 27, and that's just because we allowed the user to input those uh, those values instead of defining them for the user. So we're going to get into that a little bit more when I do some other tutorials on user input and changing variables based on what the user inputs. For now, that completes our dice rolling program with user input. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned a lot. Please subscribe to my channel for many more tutorials on the way. Have a lot of fun with your new dice rolling program. I want to hear all about it in the comment section below. See you on the next one. It's funny I say that because you actually can't see me yet. I'm talking through a computer screen. But I'll be here soon with the next tutorial.